That is Roan. Given the demographics of my regular audience, you'd be forgiven if the voice inside your head just went, Who? She is a young woman, a 26-year-old singer from Missouri. And I am a 46-year-old Aussie bloke. That one demographical fact means my exposure to pop music from new artists whose fame now grows out of places like Spotify and TikTok is extremely low. It's completely normal for someone like me, especially with the recreational habits that I maintain, to be quite ignorant of the music kids these days are listening to. Despite these facts all working against me on this, I have just learned about Chapel Roan, a stage name for a 26-year-old woman from Missouri, USA. And I just listened to a couple of her more recent tracks. To my ears, it's fairly generic sounding pop, obviously and somewhat ironically given my introduction, inspired by the synth pop era or synth wave stuff that was indeed rising to popularity in the mid to late 80s when I were but a young preteen lad. Even her music videos tried desperately hard to ape and emulate the mid-80s vibe that I grew up with, VHS-style filters, cheesy pantomimes of what the entertainment industry thinks being a teen in the 80s was like, and obtuse film grain pretending to be behind-the-scenes shots of obviously heavily produced scenes to fake a feeling of authenticity to let the kids relate to the corporate message. It is almost, frankly, verging on parody, especially considering it's coming from someone who wasn't even alive till nearly two decades after this stuff was actually being created. But I'm not here today to review or critique a music genre that I didn't even like when it was actually new, or the recording industry's latest attempt to feed from its fetid corpse. Synthwave is all snark aside, Synthwave is fine. And from what I've seen of Roan specifically, she's more than likely a talented performer in her own right, doing her own thing in a way that feels authentic to her and what she wants to do as a performer, as a singer. I'm obviously just not the target market. Very obviously. And that is perfectly cool, or as we used to say in the day, rad. I've got no right at all to be all late-born Gen X cynical about her or her art. But... Ronan and I do have one thing in common. We are both diagnosed sufferers of bipolar disorder type 2. And I discovered both the existence of this young woman and her openness about her mental health disorder via Twitter today in something that made me, frankly, furious. There's been a big fuss being made right now over the last couple of days or so about her announcing that she is unable to perform in New York and DC as part of her current live performance tour. She's cancelling the shows, stating in a social media post that she feels overwhelmed right now and unable to perform and is making a choice to prioritise her health. This has been met with criticism and ridicule, to say the least. One heavily retweeted person saying... Katy Perry performed after her husband divorced her 30 minutes before a show. That's not how divorces work, by the way. Uh, Arena Grande did a whole ass tour on the toughest moments of her life. And so did T.S. and MC. Don't know who those are. Uh, and, and most pop stars. If you know who T.S. and MC are, don't let me know. I don't care. Honestly, don't care. Sometimes you don't feel good, but you still got a show to work. That's how life works. Shrugging emoji. Now. If your first reaction to that, the show must go on mentality, that position uh, is, yeah, she's a performer. That's what the job is. Sometimes we all just got to go do our job, even when we're not feeling our best. Get on with it. You have, I'm afraid, desperately and rather dangerously misunderstood what is going on here. And it is a very common example of the kind of ableism people show to others suffering from mental health conditions specifically. Bipolar depression isn't like feeling upset because you just signed some legal papers, divorce for example, uh, and having to push on with your show, you know, because the show must go on. It's not like powering through a day's work when you've just heard that your grandmother is, is in the hospital with lung cancer, which is a thing I did, by the way. That's a real thing. And it's not like forcing yourself to give a presentation when you have like a really bad headache or an upset tummy because you think you've caught that bug that's been going around the office lately. There are others blasting Roan on her own social media accounts, like directly about how she should have given more notice before cancelling the shows. Bipolar disorder is definitely not something you can mark on your calendar. Uh, uh, oh, 
Tuesday the 14th? No, I uh, can't do Tuesday the 14th. I'll be curled up in bed thinking about if this is the last time I'll ever know what laughter feels like ever again in my whole miserable life. Sorry. Bipolar isn't just feeling overworked or stressed or tired or frustrated or a little bit fried out or just worried that you, you can't get your best work done today, so you might as well not even try. There are others deriding this young woman for even daring to do something that she loves for a living and be successful at it because her mental health disorder makes it inconvenient sometimes. But why would you put yourself in a position to fail? If you have chronic knee pain, do you decide to be a runner in a standard job even if you are dying? If you don't turn in, you're fired. Really? I mean, sure, okay, that's right. In a standard job, if you suffer the kinds of disruptive disability that uh, is bipolar disorder, you do often face challenges in the workplace. I spent eight years working in retail and what I did to myself while suffering from then undiagnosed bipolar disorder to do that job, to keep that job and to excel at that job enough to be promoted twice, nearly, and I mean this in a very literal sense, nearly killed me. And when I say it nearly killed me, I mean me, I nearly killed me. Doing that was incredibly harmful to me and my mental health, my life, my personal relationships, everything suffered. And it was only made worse because I did not understand what or why it was happening. Because I, again, I was undiagnosed at that point. Here's a fact. Unemployment rates for standard jobs for people with bipolar are massively higher than the general population. And those who are employed are highly likely to suffer issues in the workplace far more often than regular people with worse opportunities, worse status in the job, worse income in the job. Statistically, the average person misses around seven days uh, of work a year due to health reasons. Bipolar people are almost triple that, 19 days on average a year. And you can just imagine what the average employer thinks about that kind of behavior. Hey, you're taking three times more sick days than everyone else I've got working for me. What's up with that? So to take a big steaming shit on someone with bipolar for having issues at even a job as non-standard as being a singer, especially one so young and already extremely successful, despite the disadvantages our health conditions present us, is reprehensible at best, and at worst it is vile, evil even. And it doesn't even stop there. Popcrave, an account with nearly 2 million followers on Twitter, openly mocked her while repeating the derision a recent SNL sketch hurled her way, comparing Roan to a caricature of a hypersensitive diva, unappreciative of her own success, and just playing at being victim. As someone else pointed out on that very tweet, this is the kind of shit why bipolar people don't tend to be open or share what we suffer. We're treated as a joke, as our punchline, as weak and pathetic people unable to act like a normal person should act. So let me share something with you. If you meet someone with bipolar, you are talking to someone who is in a lifelong battle with chaos itself. And if you meet someone as old as I am, for example, who is still standing here, Know that we are one of the strongest motherfuckers you will ever meet in your life, simply because we are still here. The short version of the medical side of bipolar type 2 is it's a mood disorder. It involves a typical activity in the neurotransmitters in our brains, which tends to bulk up the prefrontal cortex, which in turn absolutely foobars our ability to regulate emotion and mood. It screws with our energy levels, motivation, impulse control and pushes us to extremes of two polar states. Bipolar, two poles. And each of us experiences this to a different extent and a different balance and to different severities. If you've met one bipolar person, you've met one bipolar person kind of thing. But in general, on the one hand, there's hypomania, which is one of the key differences between type one and type two, where type one tend to suffer full-blown manic episodes, full mania. Hypomania, literally translated as undermania, is a little less, well, not less extreme, but Less exaggerated, maybe. It's a fuzzy line. It is different, but not lesser. It causes a markedly elevated mood and emotional state, and that can be cheerful and excitable and energetic and enthusiastic, or even euphoric, like you might imagine from what you've seen of bipolar, like you've seen on, on TV or movie, thanks to Hollywood, who always dumb it way down. There can also be an equally high spike in irritability or risk-taking behavior. 
the other side, which is something I personally suffer far more often and with much, much higher frequency than hypermania, is depression. And when I say depression, most people think, well, depression, sad, the same thing, because that's what a normal person experiences as depression. That's when they use the word. They're depressed because they lost their job or, or they experience a loss pet maybe pet, pet a pet died that that depresses you doesn't it you feel really sad about that that i'm depressed because my favorite pet died when we talk about depression in the context of mental health disorders like bipolar we are talking about a depression of everything that we are it is not depression as in sadness it is depression as in depressed extreme fatigue sleep disruption uh, diminished interest and motivation and ability to even function in our lives hobbies even simple daily routines changes in speech, even our ability to move our bodies, feelings of hopelessness, nihilism, guilt, shame, and an inability to focus or concentrate or communicate. It disrupts and twists and violates who we are at our core as people. It is a disability, but it's an invisible disability to most people and desperately misunderstood by many more. So it frequently doesn't get treated like the debilitating, life-disrupting and person-rotting disability or monster that it is. It is figuratively and literally, to use the word Rowan used, overwhelming. And it is not something you can just will yourself past or overcome by watching a funny movie or going for a nice walk in the sun with a friend. That is simply not how it works. I promise you, if it did work like that, I would be doing that every time I, I started to get depressed because I don't like feeling like that. So if there was an easy way, I'll just go for a, a quick, you know, walk around the block and I'll feel better. I would do that. Oh, but with correct diet and exercise, it'll fix it. No, it won't. Try that too. Of course I have. I do not like being depressed. I promise you, I have tried all the recommendations of people who don't suffer from this who think it will cure it healthy diet regular exercise all that sort of stuff and i know i don't look like it now because i haven't been eating properly recently because i have been depressed and that f's up my diet something shocking i've been eating all kinds of crap which is why i'm so much heavier now than i was six months ago even and even for people with easy and ongoing access to proper medical care and and being properly medicated and not all of us respond to medication by the way i don't um well, you're not safe there either. The very best we can hope is, is management and treatment. There is no cure, no escape. It's woefully under-researched. There's not even any hope of a, of, on the horizon for better treatments. And it gets worse with time. I am, in the last couple of years, noticing mine get much worse and much more frequent. And frankly, it is scaring the absolute shit out of me. And as a little cherry on top of that shit cake, it is frequently and extremely common to have a comorbidity, a separate but linked health issue, often mental health, anxiety disorders, eating disorders, vastly heightened risk of substance abuse disorders. I personally am very careful about that last one because I am prone to forming habits. I, I've seen it in my family, what booze does when used, you know, self-medication habitually. I've seen what it does to people. And I am constantly terrified of falling into that little slippery slope and, and the urge to self-medicate for any respite or escape or just change in a day, however brief it might be. And people with bipolar disorder have a life expectancy rather lower than lifelong smokers. The statistics are heavily skewed by just how many of us don't last past being young. So when I tell people, like whoever the fuck pile of absolute empathy devoid dog shit that wrote that damn tweet for Popgrave and the SNL writers to go fuck themselves, that is where I'm coming from. It's hard enough just to survive this monster infesting our lives without being mocked, derided, ridiculed, being made the butt of a joke when we are at our most vulnerable and sensitive. People like them are part of the reason it is so hard to talk about this and why our life expectancy is so short. So hey, maybe next time you see someone in crisis online, I don't care who, a stranger, someone famous, some friggin' YouTuber, whatever, maybe get off their dick. Maybe it's just someone making a choice 
to prioritize themselves and their own health and safety and for, for just a little while instead of focusing on you and your needs for a change. How about you try empathy for a change? How about you don't treat them like the butt of your jokes? Because even on top of everything else that we go through, and I've barely touched the top of the iceberg here, I promise you that, know that we already feel guilty a crushing, debilitating guilt about letting other people down when we can't be normal, when we can't do what is expected of us, when we can't deliver on what we said we were going to do or where we were going to be. So for other people to contribute to that by actively kicking at our ribs when we are down, when we're at our most vulnerable, it might just be the last goddamn straw for someone more vulnerable than you. I know I feel crushed enough when I have to cancel a, a live stream, one of my regular weekend live streams, and I've got a tiny audience over there, 20 to 30 odd average, tiny. And I still feel like absolute dog shit every time I have to apologize to my regulars saying, hey, can't stream today. Depression's kicking the shit out of me. And I say that knowing that my regulars do understand. We've talked about this on live streams. We have discussions about this. They understand. And I know they understand. And I still feel like shit for not being able to make it. I can't even imagine what disappointing hundreds of thousands of anonymous ticket-buying fans feels like for Roan. Especially when they attack her on social media because of it. At 26 years old, she's barely begun a journey to find for herself what I ha had to find to clutch to, just to keep me alive in my darkest moments. If you believe in, in some kind of merciful power, you best pray no one you love, or least of all yourself, has to live inside the chaos people like us, more vulnerable than you do, experience. I'm getting pretty worked up about this. Back in, what, 2007, uh, Chris Crocker, a stage name for someone who now goes by Kara Cunningham, made a video that you probably know about. It went pretty viral. It's the leave Britney alone person. Huh? Back then, and still today, because they reference it in that new SNL sketch, by the way, they were mocked mercilessly, derided, shat on for their histrionics and their melodrama of their presentation, or being accused of using Britney Spears' struggles as a platform to bolster their own profile. This is what happens to people who publicly plead for empathy towards other people. Yes, it's tempting to have a laugh at, at how melodramatic uh, Chris Crocker was being in that video, but all they were asking is, hey, someone's having a tough time right now, how about you don't jump all over their dick while you're at it? People who want to fill their empty lives by ripping apart popular and famous people, celebrities, feel exposed when someone so loud and so melodramatically calls them out on their festering, vulture-like impulses to shit on any perceived failure of someone successful because it makes them feel better about their pitiful little lives. They don't want to be reminded about how vicious and callous and inhumane they're being to another person. They want uh, the shield of fame. Famous people aren't real people. It's all right to mock them. It helps remove them from what they're doing to another person. So when you tear that shield, that veil from them, and expose them for the mean bastards they are, they react violently, cruelly, because they don't want to be mean bastards. They think they're good people. I'm a good person. I take my dog for works. I give to charity every once in a while. I'm a good person. Fuck Britney Spears, though. Haha, <laughs> she has a mental health condition. Look at her. She shaved her head. Ha ha ha. Person in crisis. Hilarious. 26-year-old pop star has to cancel the show because her mental health makes it impossible for her to go on stage without wanting to kill herself. <laughs> what a loser. Get a real job. I will say only this further about that kind of person. They are unworthy of dogs. A lot of people in this world are unworthy of dogs. That should be what you strive for as a person. Be worthy of a dog's love. So yeah, I get a bit worked up when I see people putting the boot into a 26-year-old girl who just wants to take some time for herself so she doesn't completely fall apart. Like that's so much to ask. Fuck those people.